नमस्कार एवरी इन्वेस्टर डिजायर्स अ फंड मैनेजर हु जनरेट्स कंसिस्टेंटली हायर रिटर्न दैन द मार्केट हाउ एवर आर यू श्योर द एक्सेस रिटर्न आर ड्यू टू द स्किल ऑफ दैट फंड मैनेजर एंड नॉट जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ लक Detangling the skill and luck from a fund performance is important for a prudent investor. In this video, we will review a statistical method to distinguish the skillful fund managers from the lucky ones. My name is Jyoti Maske. I am a statistician and a fund manager of multi-axis quantitative fund called Sankhya India Portfolio. Before we begin this video. let us quickly formulate the problem at hand there are around 500 active mutual funds in india how does one analyze these funds to select the best ones spi va india scorecard that is standard and poors index versus active india scorecard is a biannual report which compares indian equity mutual funds with their comparable indices over short and long term This table is taken from the latest SPI VA scorecard updated till 31st December 2018. We can observe that barring a few outlying cases like mid and small cap, the index in almost all other market caps has outperformed the majority of mutual funds over short as well as long term. Out of the few winners who managed to outperform the index consistently, one key question remains are the outperformers skill or are they plain lucky naturally we would want those fund managers who outperform the index by their skill how does one separate skill from the luck of the manager this was answered by a legendary duo in finance pharma and french There would be hardly any investor who doesn't know their names. Their 2009 paper, "Luck vs Skill in the Cross Section of Mutual Fund Returns," is the inspiration behind our study. Now we will review the process and the results of our analysis. So, how do we start? First, let us define what we want to classify. What is skill? It is the ability of the fund manager. to generate more returns than what are expected from that fund for example suppose some model tells you that the expected return from a fund is 12% and the manager manages to generate 16% return then the excess 4% can be said due to the manager's skill now comes the tricky part what is luck the answer is logical if we remove the skill portion from the fund returns what we are left with is devoid of any skill so that is pure luck so the way we calculate luck return series is to subtract the skill from all the returns in case of our example if we subtract the 4% skill returns what we are left with is the pure luck portfolio there are two key questions with this approach first how do we estimate returns how do we know what is the expected return from a fund to further calculate the skill of that manager and second we are calculating the pure luck portfolio but how can we make sure that the luck series is robust so let's review these questions one by one there are various models to estimate a fund's return we will use one of the most famous one capm capital asset pricing model or capm is renowned model for estimating funds excess over risk free returns from markets excess over risk free returns <clears throat> the mathematical formula is expected fund return equal to risk free rate plus beta times market return minus risk free rate so here beta is called the systematic risk market return minus risk free rate is called market premium the additional return for taking market risk and beta is the sensitivity of the fund relative to this market premium a portfolio with beta more than 1 will be more sensitive to market returns than the one with beta less than 
so this is just a conceptual explanation but mathematically when we regress fund returns minus risk free on market returns minus risk free then beta is the slope of that regression line now we are ready to calculate scale of the fund manager so when we subtract the fund's actual returns from the expected one the resulting excess return can be called the scale of that manager so alpha is simply the excess return but we are not only interested in the fund with highest excess returns we want to be sure of the accuracy of that alpha after answering the first question now let's answer the second one how do we ensure the robustness of the luck series for this we need to put on our thinking hats and venture in the deep dark world of statistics we will make use of a technique called bootstrap simulations method a quick review of the steps first we create a series of zero alpha returns by subtracting respective alpha from all returns for example if you have annual returns of fund say r1 r2 r3 and so on then first you calculate alpha then we subtract that alpha from each of these returns to get a new series r1 minus alpha r2 minus alpha and so on since the alpha is made zero this is a pure luck series but this series can be a product of a random chance and may not be a true representative of the universe hence we use bootstrap simulations this bootstrap method is useful when we want to extract information from a limited set of data so here is what we do suppose this is your original series of 10 observations a b c up to j we will now create a random sample of same size with replacement which means one observation can be selected more than once and some might be missing altogether in the generated sample the first sample may look something like this a a c d and so on so here some values are repeated some are missing from the original series but the sample size is 10 we can draw another sample which takes values from the same pool but can be drastically different from the first sample because of new repeating and missing values we will repeat this process to create 10000 of such samples these 10000 samples will be used to compute the accuracy of the luck major now we will begin assembling the data for study for each fund the accuracy of scale is denoted by t alpha of that fund for the accuracy of luck we will use simulated t alpha which is the average of 10000 t alphas from our bootstrap samples and we will repeat this sampling process separately for each fund to get its simulated t alpha and now comes the analysis part so if actual t alpha calculated from the original fund returns is more than the simulated t alpha for pure luck portfolio we can say that the manager of that fund possesses skill but if it happens that the actual t alpha is less than the luck t alpha we can say that the manager does not possess skill and any alpha he had generated is due to luck a common question at this point is will higher t alpha indicate higher skill remember we are comparing t alphas which is the major of accuracy of alpha so higher t alpha will indicate we have higher confidence in the test results but how high is good statistically using t distribution tables if the t alpha values exceeds 2 it implies that we have 95% 95% confidence in the test results with t alpha more than 1.64 our confidence is 90% So now you are equipped in understanding the results of this study. So let's dive in. This is the demonstration of calculation of alpha. 
the first column actual returns is the actual CHER of each fund. The second column is the expected return calculated using CAPM. When we subtract the two, the remaining excess return is called alpha. We also compute T alpha for each fund at this stage. Subtracting this alpha from the respective funds and computing the average simulated T alpha from 10,000 random samples will get us the T alpha of the Lux series. This is a vertical bar chart. With each, fund under, with each fund under review, with its skill and luck, T alpha plotted in front of it. The blue line shows the actual T alpha. Remember that while calculating the luck series, we have removed the alpha from the returns, effectively making it zero. So the T alpha of luck distribution will be close to zero. The top portion of the chart is where accuracy of measuring scale exceeds that of luck and the bottom part is vice versa. So the funds in the upper part can be said to be possessed skill in generating the excess return. But how confident are we in these results? T value for 95% confidence is 2. So the top three funds with actual T alpha values more than 2 can be said to be possessing skill with 95% confidence. We can be a little lax on the permissible confidence level say at 90%. The T value for 90% confidence is 1.64. So these four more funds get added to the list of skillful funds. Let us have a look at the top funds with highest T alpha in detail. These are the funds that possess skill with 95% and 90% confidence. You can observe that higher T alpha does not necessarily mean higher actual or excess return. It simply means higher conviction in the calculation. To conclude, for any prudent investor, the excess returns of fund which are attributable to the skill of the fund manager are preferable to those due to luck. Comparing the measure of accuracy T alpha for skill and luck distribution empowers investors to take sound decisions, helping us separate the skillful managers from the lucky ones. Thank you for watching this video. In case of any doubt, feel free to reach us at www.multi-act.com. I am Jyoti Maske, Fund Manager of Sankhya India Portfolio. Thank you and goodbye till next time.